Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video, I'll show you how to get a direct current or DC power supply from your DCC controller. DC power is useful on your layout if you want to power some LEDs, for example, or maybe you've got sensors, servos, or some other electronics that needs a DC supply. Generally, for powering DC accessories, I'd recommend using a completely separate DC bus for running around your layout. But if you only just wanna power one thing, then setting up a whole new bus is quite a lot of effort. So in that case, it might be easier to get power directly from the track. And sometimes you specifically want to take power directly from the track. For example, maybe you want an LED to show if that section of track is powered, or you want to have lighting in a coach that gets its power from the rails. The problem with DCC is that we can't just plug our DC accessories into it. Our locos only work because they have decoders in them that convert the DCC power supply into DC for the locomotive motors. You could fit all your DC accessories with decoders and that'd be cool because then you could turn them on and off using your controller, but that's gonna get expensive very quickly. Fortunately, there are a few cheap and easy ways to get a DC supply from your DCC controller and we'll look at some of those now. By far the easiest way of getting DC power from a DCC supply is to use one of these LM2596HV AC to DC voltage regulator step down buck converters. This can take an AC input of between 4.5 volts and 45 volts and give a DC output that is adjustable between 3 and 35 volts and they cost around 4 or 5 pounds on eBay. So here I've plugged in the DCC supply from the Hornby Select and I've connected my multimeter to the output and we can see that we've got a DC supply of 12 volts. If I adjust this screw then I can change the output voltage. Here I've attached some 12 volt LEDs, the type that you might use in some line side buildings for example. And the nice thing about the variable voltage output is that if I turn the screw clockwise and reduce the voltage, I've got some basic control over the brightness of the LEDs. This is the easiest way of getting a DC supply from DCC, but the board is relatively large. You couldn't really use this for coach lighting for example, and it's quite expensive. We can achieve roughly the same thing in a smaller size and for less money. This is a DB104 bridge rectifier. The bridge rectifier contains four diodes, which are like one-way gates. They take the alternating supply in on one side where the wavy line symbols are and output a direct current supply on the other side where the positive and negative symbols are. For our purposes, we can treat DCC as being like an alternating current or AC supply. So here I've connected my DCC supply to the AC input side and my multimeter is set to measure volts on the DC output side and you can see I'm getting a reading of just under 20 volts. This is suitable for powering my LGB street lamp for example. The only other thing we might want to add is a capacitor. This is a 100 microfarad capacitor and it's placed across the output terminals of the bridge rectifier and this acts as a filter. It should give us a smoother DC supply and act as a mini stay alive, which will prevent lights from flickering, for example. It's important that the capacitor is put in the right way round. You can see that one side is marked as negative and this is normally the shorter leg. This one is rated for 50 volts and most DCC supplies are between 15 and 22 volts, so that should be fine. You need to be a little bit careful when working with capacitors. Always make sure they're safely discharged when you disconnect them. For example, using a lighting circuit, you can see the light fade away as the energy drains. The 100 microfarad capacitors used in this example don't store too much energy, but as you can see, this one has been charged to 35 volts, and you can hear on the video that it creates quite a snap if discharged too quickly. Also, if you're using loads of these capacitors on your layout, then you might encounter something called inrush current when you first turn on your controller, as all the capacitors charge simultaneously. You can limit this current by placing a resistor just before the capacitor. In total, the bridge rectifier and the capacitor cost around one pound from eBay, so it's a lot cheaper than the LM2596, and I'll put links in the description below. If this DCC supply was coming from track pickups and I connected a resistor and a strip of LEDs, you can see that we've got the basis for some simple coach lighting. But keep in mind that the voltage you get out will depend on the DCC controller you're using. One controller might give you 15 volts and another 20 volts. For more sensitive electronics, we want to know we're always going to get the same output so that we don't risk damaging anything we plug into it. And that's where these buck converters come in. These mini 560 buck converters take a DC supply between five and 20 volts. We can ditch the capacitor and connect these up to the bridge rectifier and they will always output a fixed voltage. 
For example, this one outputs a constant 5 volts, and you can get them in a variety of other output values. The Mini 560s have got optional LEDs on them to show when they're powered, and they can be enabled or disabled electronically. They cost around £3 each from eBay. If you want to spend a bit more, then this is a fancier option and costs £4.20 on eBay. It can take an input of up to 40 volts DC, has variable output, and an LED screen which displays the voltages. Pressing this button on the left turns the screen on and off, and the button on the right switches the screen between showing the input voltage to showing the output voltage as indicated by the LEDs, which makes it really easy to adjust. So there you go, a few options for accessing DC power from a DCC supply. The larger all-in-one adjustable output LM2596HV unit, which has the bridge rectifier, capacitor and buck converter built in, or the smaller DIY budget version with the DB104 bridge rectifier and the capacitor with the optional buck converters. Which one you use really depends on what you want to use it for. Obviously, the downsides of both these solutions are that they're drawing current through your controller, which may be limited in what it's able to deliver. And if you get a short circuit on your layout and your controller shuts down, then you lose your DC supply too until everything resets. Not ideal if you're using this to run sensors, Arduinos, etc., which is why a dedicated DC power bus is usually the preferred option. But I hope you found that useful, and if you did, then please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Special thanks to all the YouTube members and patrons for your support. It's very much appreciated and your names are up on the screen now. All affiliate links to the components are in the description below. That's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.